In today's video, we're going to create a simple analog clock. Here's what we'll cover. First, we'll create the basic structure of our clock using HTML and CSS. Then, we'll use JavaScript to rotate the hands according to the current time. If you're new here, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to get notified every time I upload a new video. Without further ado, let's dive in and start building the clock. First, let's create a div that will contain all the clock elements. Next, let's wrap the hours in a div and add the class numbers. Inside the wrapper, add the hours in the following structure. Since it will take time to type, I'll use Emmet to create the HTML. Now we have 12 divs with a class of number and a style which define a variable i. And each hour is enclosed in a span inside the divs. With this, let's start styling in CSS. First, reset the padding, margin, and box sizing for all elements to avoid layout issues. In the body selector, define the following variables. Then, use Flexbox to center the clock on the page. For the clock, I'll make it rounded with a white background. I'll also use the clock size variable here. We can optionally add a border, but ensure the clock position is set to relative. For the numbers wrapper, I'll add a temporary border to visualize its layout. Then, set its size to 100% and position it as absolute. Next, duplicate the styles, but apply them to the individual numbers. Then use Flexbox to vertically center the numbers. In the same selector, we'll utilize the variable we previously defined in the HTML. We'll achieve this by using the transform property to rotate each number. Use the calc function to perform math calculation. Then access the variable using the var function. We'll multiply this variable by 30 degrees. We use 30 because it corresponds to each hour, totaling 360 degrees. Now the numbers are positioned around the edge of the clock. Let's add some padding to create some space, and also make the numbers bold. Next, let's adjust the orientation of each number. This is why we enclose each number in a span. So select the span and copy the transform line we defined earlier. We'll reverse the rotation by using negative degrees. The numbers are upright, but we still need to adjust the rotation. Here, the 12 is on the left, but it should be at the top. To fix that, let's go to the number selector. We have to rotate this div to 90 degrees. Lastly, update the span to account for the 90 degree rotation. Now that we're done with the numbers, let's remove the temporary borders. Moving on, let's return to the HTML and create an indicator for each second. Since there will be 60 elements representing each second, I'll use Emmet again to save some time. Each element will have a class name dot and a style attribute to define the variable x. Then in CSS, let's add a border again to visualize the element. Let's also set it full size to fill up the clock. 
Then use absolute positioning to stack the elements. Next, create a before pseudo element with a 5 pixel size. Then apply the following styles to make it look like a dot. Next, we'll center the dot vertically using flexbox on the parent element. Then rotate the dot element using the transform property. But we'll utilize the x variable that was defined in the HTML. And change the degree multiplier to 6. This allows us to evenly spread 60 elements across 360 degrees. Now the dots are surrounding the clock edge. Add a bit amount of padding. Also, remove the temporary borders. Now that we're done with the indicators, let's move on to the hands. Add the second, minute, and hour hands in HTML. Back to the styles, we'll set the background color and size of the hands. The height must be at most half the clock size. Also, set the position to absolute so it can be moved to the center. Here, we need to align the center of the element with its parent by using translate. It's important to set the transform origin to bottom for each hand. To understand why, let's go to the seconds hand and rotate it. Here, if I don't set the transform origin, the element will rotate from its center. That's why we need to specify it. I'll rotate each hand temporarily here, but we'll handle this dynamically in JavaScript later on. Let's also apply some styles to distinguish each hand. Also make the hands pointy by setting a border radius on the top left and right corners. For the hour hand, let's make it thicker than the others. Let's also cover the part where the hands meet at the center of the clock. Instead of making a new element, let's use the clock selector for this. We'll simply make a pseudo element with the following styles. Then on the clock selector, use flexbox to center the pseudo element. Put the pseudo element above the hands by setting the position to absolute. Lastly, add Z index to the element and the hands so they do not overlap each other. To ensure everything is set correctly, let's manually rotate each hand for testing. Now, we've completed the styling for the hands. Let's work on the period element next. We'll place the AM or PM indicator here. The styles will be simple and straightforward. With that, we've completed the HTML and CSS. Let's clean up any unnecessary styles and move on to the JavaScript. Let's begin by adding an event listener for when the document is loaded. 
In the event handler, create a function to update the clock. This function will log the current time to the console for now. Call this function immediately when the page loads, and every second after that using the setInterval function. Next, get all the hand elements using query selector. Also, let's define variables for the current second, minute, and hour. Next, we need to convert these values into degrees. To get the seconds ratio, divide the current value to the total number of seconds. Next, we'll multiply the resulting ratio by 360 degrees and use this value to rotate the seconds hand. To calculate the minutes ratio, multiply the current minutes by 60 seconds. Then divide it by the total number of seconds in an hour. Then rotate the minutes hand, similar to how we did it for the seconds hand. For the hour ratio, use the modulo operator to convert hours from a 24 to 12 hour format. Then multiply the result by the total number of minutes in an hour. Divide the outcome by the total number of minutes in 12 hours. And just like before, we'll rotate the hour hand. Let's test it by comparing the console output with the displayed clock. Looks like it matches. Before we proceed, let's refactor the code a bit. Now, let's work on the period indicator. First, select the period element. Then in the update clock function, set the value of period element. And with that, we're done with the analog clock. There's one thing to consider though. Here, the time just passed for 30 p.m. But the hour hand is pointing exactly at 4. You might prefer the hour hand to be positioned between 4 and 5, indicating it's halfway through the hour, and 3 quarters of the way through, when the time is quarter to 5. To apply that, simply add the minutes to the hours when calculating the hour ratio. As you can see, the hour hand is now positioned between 4 and 5. We can apply the same principle to minutes ratio by adding seconds to minutes. But the change may not be obvious unless the clock is bigger. So, I'll undo this change. It's up to you if you want to keep it. Before we end this tutorial, let's refactor the code one last time. And with that, the analog clock is finally completed. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. If you enjoy this type of content, 
Don't forget to subscribe, like the video or leave a comment. Thanks for watching.